Damn, this thing is heavy. Hello, this is the Computer Guy 96. And what is a computer guy without a ThinkPad? The answer, of course, is just a computer guy, as I got this recently. I got this last week, in January 2018. So let's take a look at it. This is an IBM or Lenovo ThinkPad T60. On the outside, it just has the IBM logo. On the left side, there's a cooling vent, VGA port, phone jack for the modem, Ethernet, microphone and headphone ports, a USB port, and two expansion slots. On the front, there's an infrared port and a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth switch. On the right, there's the latch, which you need to move to the right to open it. On the right, there's the spot where the hard drive is and an ultra base slot, which in this case has a DVD-RW drive. There's this switch here, which you can move. This thing comes out and you can pull it and uh, exchange this with something else that goes in this ultra base slot. But of course, you shouldn't do it while the computer is on. In Windows, there's actually an option to eject the optical drive, so you can do it while it's on, but you have to eject it first. And two more USB ports and a Kensington lock. On the back, there's the spot for the battery, the power connector, and another cooling vent. On the top, it has indicators for when it's running on battery power, for when it's plugged in, and for when it's in sleep mode. It's a bit scratched up, of course. I got this computer, they said refurbished, but it's, it really was just used. But it's in pretty good condition. This is the battery that came with it. It does not stick out the back, so it's not an extended battery. This one only has the Lenovo logo on it. It has a date code of June 2011, although this T60 is a bit older than that. And it's 10.8 volts, 4.84 amp hour. It lasts for about an hour and a half, which isn't very good, but it could be worse. On the bottom, of course, it has some information. This computer is type 2008 CTO, and the product ID is 2008ZNX. But I don't think this is from 2008. It could be, but the T60 was introduced around 2006. And it has a product key sticker for Windows XP Professional. You can't really open it with one hand. Not sure if the hinges have gotten more stiff over the years or something. This has a 14.1 inch screen at 1024 by 768. And it's also matte, which doesn't have all those reflections, so it's easier to film. Here we see more indicators for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, num lock and caps lock, hard drive activity, power on, battery, AC adapter and sleep mode. And here it has the Lenovo logo. So this is both a Lenovo and IBM. But I think it's built by Lenovo, obviously. This is the keyboard, which is hardly worn out, so that's cool. And it has a good typing feel, although I still think my HP Omnibook Windows 95 laptop has a more solid typing feel. It has a track point with tiny dots over it. I think I preferred the smooth one from my HP Omnibook, but this isn't bad. Mouse buttons for the track point, and then a small touchpad, which is pretty tiny, with two more mouse buttons. It has an Intel Core 2 Duo. Here it says Intel Centrino Duo, because that's their marketing name for an Intel processor and Intel Wireless. The processor in this is not called Intel Centrino Duo. It has ATI Mobility Radeon X1300 graphics. It came with Windows XP, and so it was designed for it. And there's also a fingerprint reader. I've just plugged in the power adapter, and so this light turned on, but I left the battery unplugged because I don't want to wear it out more than it already is. This computer came with 2GB of RAM, it can be upgraded to 4GB, and it also came with an 80GB mechanical hard drive, which I'll be upgrading to an SSD as soon which I'll be upgrading to an SSD as soon as I can. And so, before actually getting an SSD, I tried out some operating systems to see what runs best on this computer with this configuration. When I got this computer, it came with a clean installation of Windows Vista Business, and it was completely empty, and it didn't even have most drivers, and it complained when turning on that 
uh, I didn't have a genuine copy, so I just formatted the hard drive. The first operating system I tried was Windows XP. You might say that it's unsafe to use today because Microsoft doesn't support it anymore, but after installing it using an OEM disk and the product key that came with it, I installed the unofficial service pack 4, which installs more updates and, and also applies the WePOS patch which lets Windows XP get security updates until April 2019. So Windows XP can still get security updates as of when I'm making this video. But after setting everything up, I even installed the ThinkManage system update app that let me upgrade the BIOS. I installed all the drivers and uh, some programs to try it like Firefox ESR, which is still supported on Windows XP. It's not Firefox Quantum, but still good enough. But although it still gets security updates, it's beginning to lose application support. For example, I cannot install Dropbox. It, it requires Windows 7 or newer. And so that convinced me to try something newer. So I tried Windows 7 because Vista also is, is not supported anymore. So I tried Windows 7, but it was way too slow for me to stand, so I got rid of it. I tried Windows 10, and it was still very slow. It's not, it wasn't slower than Windows 7, and with a little patience, it is usable, but this computer really needs an SSD. I even tried Hackintosh on it. I looked up Hackintosh guides for this computer, and the newest version of macOS that was mentioned was 10.9 Mavericks, so I tried that first. I made an installer using the, the official macOS 10 Mavericks downloaded from the Mac App Store. I made an install USB drive using Unibeast, and it booted right up, but at first I couldn't go on in the installer. But then I booted it up with the CPUs equals one option and it worked. I was able to install it. But I couldn't get the video driver to work. Again, this is an ATI Mobility Radeon X1300. And I found a lot of results, but I couldn't get anything to work. So I also tried Snow Leopard. I tried a hacked version called Iatcos S3. It also installed just fine and worked well, but I couldn't get the video drivers to work. I could have probably gotten it to work, but I... And of course, I tried Linux too. I tried Ubuntu 16.04. I did not install it, I just tried it with a live USB drive. But now I'll show you the OS I have installed now. Yes, I installed Arch Linux, but I installed it the easy way. I did not download the official Arch Linux ISO file and burned it to a disk and uh, installed it with all those commands. Instead, I downloaded something called Zen Installer that lets you install Arch Linux more easily. It's still not as easy as other Linux distributions like Ubuntu, but I could figure it out. So here's the login screen. I chose the XFCE desktop environment to have something that is kind of lightweight, but not as lightweight as LXDE. So here is the desktop. It's not very fast, but, but the startup time is reasonable. Also, I turned off the trackpad. I only used the track point because this trackpad is pretty small. I mean, like the one in the newest MacBook Pro is huge. I don't want something like that, but this is kind of small. And this stuff on the right is Conkey with a configuration file called Conkey F Society. And it's alerting me that there are some updates. Well, actually, I won't be installing them because I'll be getting rid of this Arch Linux installation even though I, I've customized it a little bit. See it's supposed to show the battery life but because I don't have the battery for some reason it says 50% percent whatever that means and actually it runs pretty good. I also tried some university work with a program called JetBrains Data Grip. I had to add it to this menu manually but now it works. I only installed the trial instead of using my student license because I knew I wouldn't be keeping this for more than a month. And again, it's quite slow at starting up, but eventually it will work. 
and I use this for database exercises using PostgreSQL. I forgot to mention the think light this computer has. Instead of a webcam, it has a little light. You press Fn page up, which are the keys on these extremes, and this little light turns on. Of course, it's not useful right now, but it's pretty cool. It compensates for not having a, a backlit keyboard. If we go to About XFCE here, you can see it's the version distributed by Arch Linux. I installed Hard Info, the hardware info program, which shows the Intel Core 2 Duo T5600 processor at 1.83 GHz which is not as good as the Intel Core 2 Duo P8700 processor in my 2009 MacBook Pro. So the reason I'm getting rid of this Arch Linux installation is because I recently heard that the Windows 10 free upgrade program for assistive technology users, instead of expiring on December 31st, 2017, like they said before, they extended the deadline to January 16, 2018, so I still have time to get a free Windows 10 upgrade. Now I don't really need assistive technology, but on Windows I have toggle keys, which makes the computer beep when you turn on caps lock or num lock or scroll lock, and also sound sentry, which makes the screen blink when there's an alert. So those are considered assistive technologies and so technically I'm eligible for this free upgrade. Now being a university student I have access to Windows 7, 8 and 10 for free. However I've already used my Windows 7 professional license on my 2008 HP Tower PC and my Windows 10 Pro license on my 2015 HP laptop. The only product key I still have is one for Windows 8 Pro. The problem is, I hate Windows 8, and I would never voluntarily install it, unless it is just temporarily so I can upgrade to Windows 10. I think I can still install Windows 10 using a 7 or 8 product key. But to make sure, I'm going to install Windows 8 and then use this assistive technologies upgrade. So it stores a digital entitlement license on Microsoft servers. I tried Windows 7 and 10 without activating them for a few hours and they weren't very interesting. And now I guess I have to try the, one, the version in between as well. Because I don't want to make this video too long, I'm going to split it into multiple parts. But here is a little teaser. Windows 10 is installed and works great, including the fingerprint reader. Before booting up to Windows 8, I'm going to show you the BIOS setup for this computer. I know you can press F1 directly at that screen to go to the BIOS setup, but if you haven't seen this screen, now is your chance to see it. So F1 for BIOS setup. The BIOS version it originally had was from 2006 and I updated it to the latest one which is from 2010. So for now thank you for watching and stay tuned for the part where I install Windows 8.1 Pro and upgrade it to Windows 10 Pro.